O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Hello, and welcome to our candlelit carol service. A slightly alternative way of doing things this year, um, but I hope you will get into it and feel that you can join in. And one of the ways that you can join in tonight is by lighting a candle. So I would invite all of you at home to grab a candle somewhere and to light it. As we remember the light of the world coming down into darkness. The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in the land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. You have given them great joy, Lord. You have made them happy. They rejoice in what you have done, as people rejoice when they harvest grain or when they divide captured wealth. For you have broken the yoke that burdened them and the rod that beat their shoulders. You have defeated the nation that oppressed and exploited your people, just as you defeated the army of Midian long ago. The boots of the invading army and all their bloodstained clothing will be destroyed by fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. The Lord Almighty is determined to do all this. Amen. and verses 1 to 9 the peaceful kingdom the royal line of David is like a tree that has been cut down but just as new branches sprout from a stump so a new king will arise from among David's descendants the Spirit of the Lord will give him wisdom and the knowledge and skill to rule his people he will know the Lord's will and honour him and find pleasure in obeying him. 
He will not judge by appearance or hearsay. He will judge the poor fairly and defend the rights of the helpless. At his command, the people will be punished and evil persons will die. He will rule his people with justice and integrity. Wolves and sheep will live together in peace and leopards will lie down with young goats. Calves and lion cubs will feed together and little children will take care of them. Cows and bears will eat together and their calves and cubs will lie down in peace. Lions will eat straw as cattle do. Even a baby will not be harmed if it plays near a poisonous snake. On Zion, God's sacred hill, there will be nothing harmful or evil. The land will be as full of knowledge of the Lord as the seas are full of water. Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. 
Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favoured woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign and over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? That your baby boy would save our sons and daughters Did you know that your baby boy has come to make us new? The child that you delivered will soon deliver you Mary, did you know? Verses 18 to 25. Joseph's dream. This is how the Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, 
Son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded, and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. the birth of Jesus. At that time the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. 
and while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. The Shepherds and the Angel, Luke 2, verses 8 to 15. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But an angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. This year has been a difficult one for many of us, hasn't it? Although for some of us, uh, there's been great advantages. We've enjoyed extra time with family, the opportunity to step out of the rat race and take time uh, just being and being uh, around our, our family. But for many of us, it's been a struggle, hasn't it? A struggle with loneliness. A struggle being cut off from family and friends. A struggle financially. Some of us have struggled with our health. Some of us have experienced loved ones dying. 
we have struggled in many ways. And this year has seemed so dark, but there is a light in the darkness. And there is this glimmer of hope, isn't there, at the end of the year uh, of a possible vaccine. And as we come to the end of the year, we come to Christmas and we look again at that story. Now, it's easy to look at it as being this kind of Christmas card perfect picture uh, where everything's lovely and warm and fuzzy. But actually, the reality was very different. They were living in dark days in a country that was under occupation by an empire where they had limited freedoms. An angel appeared to a teenage girl to tell her that she would become pregnant even though she was unmarried. Then, with her fiancé Joseph, they were basically internally displaced when they were ordered by the authorities to go to the city of Joseph's birth. When they got there, it was time for Mary to give birth, but there was no place for her to go. She was essentially homeless and ended up slumming it with loads of farmyard animals. Then, as Jesus grew, the rulers of the time found out about him, found out that he was the king, the king long expected and committed great genocide. But Jesus narrowly escaped with Mary and Joseph and became asylum seekers in Egypt. In the darkness, the light of the world stepped into our humanity, stepped into our history. And as he grew, he gave hope to the hopeless. He called those who were lonely and said he would be their friend. He called those who were cut off from their family to be his sisters and his brothers, part of God's family. He called those who were struggling physically with disease to be healed. He said he would comfort all those who mourned. And to those who were alone, he said, I will be with you always. And his message is still the same today. He's calling you. He's calling you out of the darkness into his light. You see, the thing about darkness is that darkness is not actually a thing. It's an absence of something. It's the absence of light. In your darkness this year, I want to invite you to ask the light of the world to come and step in and banish that darkness. This Christmas, would you invite Jesus into your life to bring his light, his hope, his peace, his joy this Christmas?
Jesus from the East. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from Eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Amen. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 5 In the beginning, the word Jesus had already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness could never extinguish it.
glorious love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is a brother and in his name all the prayer John chapter 1 verses 1 to 7. We proclaim to you the one that, who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father then, and he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say that we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practising the truth, but if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Bye. Uh -huh.
Well, thank you for joining us. It's been a great evening and I hope you've enjoyed singing some carols uh, as worship to Jesus this evening. Um, we are taking a, a collection over our um, online services over Christmas uh, for an organisation called CAP, Christians Against Poverty. Uh, they do great work working with all people of all religions or none uh, with them, trying to get them out of debt. Um, they're doing fantastic work here in Coventry. Um, and if you would like to donate towards that, there's no obligation. Uh, you can either do that through the church and just give the reference uh, Christmas or Christmas Day and or you can give directly to our local branch through Hope Coventry. If you just Google Hope Coventry, you'll find a way to do that. All that's left for me to say is have a very Merry Christmas and a safe and happy New Year. <laughs>